Okay, so this is what the question says. It says the springs of a pickup truck act like a single spring with a first constant of, okay, uh, we have, and because I see some um, way the question is worded, like act like, so it's not an actual single spring. Let me label this as a equivalent spring constant. Meaning there is no actual spring with this constant, but somehow for the system, it works out to be that. By how much will the truck be depressed by its uh, maximum load of 810 kilogram? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, let, me, let me just draw a picture to help me imagine what this looks like. So imagine I have a truck. And um, in the way we are handling this right now, we are imagining this uh, truck as uh, sitting on basically one spring. We know it's not the real physical picture, but that's uh, how we are modeling it for the purpose of this model. And um, I, I think you have to imagine um, there being uh, some pre-existing state because uh, that 810 kilogram, I'm pretty sure that's in reference to an additional load you will place on the truck. The truck itself is already uh, more massive than 810 kilogram. So you have to imagine this truck sitting on ground and um, there is some height at which this truck is. And what I'm going to say is, okay, this uh, empty truck, however high it is, we are going to say that is our equilibrium height of the truck. That's where our zero is. We are measuring all the depression and everything from that reference point. And now imagine we place some additional mass here. This is the mass n referred to in the question. Then because of the weight of this mass, the truck will get depressed a little bit. And what the question is asking is, okay, what is that change in height, that uh, additional depression due to the mass? So, so okay, with that in mind, I think then for the um, for question A, it's a, just a simple application of Hooke's law. Hooke's law says, so, you know, what you see me do is I'm going through in my head, hey, what formulas do I know and what quantities are given, like spring constant and mass. So what do I need to know? Um, well, Hooke's law says this, that um, the spring force is given by the magnitude of spring force is given by spring constant times the, the displacement. And we are being asked for the displacement. And I think we know we are given enough to figure out everything else. We are directly given the spring constant. And OK, so I guess we are not given the spring force. So this is where I do need to draw a little bit of a free body diagram. And I'm going to do something a little bit unusual, um, which is I'm not really going to draw a free body diagram of the entire truck because uh, I think <laughs> I don't want to draw the mass of the truck. So instead of what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that there's some point of attachment for this spring. And I'm going to draw a free body diagram of that point of attachment. And um, this is basically some fictitious object of mass zero. And uh, what I need to do for this uh, static equilibrium like a situation is I need to make sure that when everything comes to rest, that the net force on this uh, element is zero. So as I look at that, um, that point of contact or the support point for the spring, um, I see two different uh, normal forces. So I see one normal force that will be due to the spring uh, that's uh, pushing it upward. So there's an upward spring force. And there will be an additional normal force that it, from the truck that is associated with this additional mass. So that additional normal force from the truck that's downward, it's pushing it downward. I say, okay, that additional force is mg. Now I keep saying the word um, additional 
because in this interaction there are some other forces that I'm choosing to ignore because they were there before and they were adding up to zero and I'm trying to make this particular analysis simple. So there's the you know weight of the truck pushing down that is actually another normal force I could draw and uh, the spring was already countering that so there was a spring force that was countering that force. So here, for the, solving this problem, these forces, they balance each other out and they don't actually affect the answer. So I'm ignoring it. <laughs> I'm just drawing the additional forces that helps me figure out this question. So um, looking at this diagram, I hope you can get, oh yeah. So my spring force, the additional spring force is equal to mg. Um, that, so that's what we need to figure and uh, we put, uh, we use a Hooke's law equation with that, then what we have is my additional spring force, mg, is equal to spring constant times delta y. So my delta y is equal to mg divided by k. Kind of simple. Um, now, um, sometimes people might worry, uh, can we really do this as in, you know, set this uh, existing equilibrium position as my new reference point and only do sort of marginal analysis from that. I have a separate lecture video where I justify that um, the, this treatment of the combined uh, gravitational and spring force as a new spring force with the equilibrium position as the um, as the new uh, equilibrium position as representing the equilibrium length of spring, that it all works out um, as long as the spring remains attached to the body, which is quite common. So, uh, so there's a more rigorous justification elsewhere. If you're interested, go take a look at that. Uh, for the purpose of this question, really all we need is this result here, um, which is not that complicated to get to. Just to make sure you convert to centimeters as you are plugging the numbers. I'll do that when I plug in the numbers in a little bit. Now, the reason I wanted to do this question is because of part B. It asks, if the pickup truck has four identical springs, what is the force constant of each? So it's trying to make this model a little bit more realistic, uh, which is that the picture that we have here, I mean, dropping supported from middle by a single giant spring, unless you're looking at some theme park attraction, that's, that's not how it actually works. How it actually works is there's a suspension at, the, at each of the uh, wheels. So the, what's more realistic is to say, okay, there are two springs at the front, or, I mean, you know, it's not literal spring, but there's a spring that's supporting the, um, the wheels. There's so two springs at the front, two springs at the back, where the wheels are. So that's um, closer to how this whole thing works. Then, then this is the question, okay, given that that's the actual picture, um, what is the, um, uh, what is the force constant of each? And, I think uh, one thing we could do is try to come up with some rule on how to add springs in parallel. Uh, we could do that, but I think uh, it's uh, more beneficial um, and more generally applicable if we simply uh, try redoing this analysis with this change. So I am still going to have this uh, fictitious um, support point that has a zero mass. Um, they, on which spring forces could act directly, on which the normal force from this mass can be accounted for. And that'll be the picture that I'm considering. Uh, so, and let me copy this free body diagram over so that I can make necessary adjustments that, uh, that we need to make due to this, um, oops, uh, due to this, this refinement in how we model this uh, truck uh, with the suspension. So when we look at the when we look at the normal force due to the additional mass, okay, this part um, I don't think anything changes. We still have the same mass. Uh, we haven't changed anything there. So let's leave that alone. For the spring, uh, for the spring force, 
this is where we now have to make uh, an adjustment. So before we had one force representing a single spring. Now, as we are treating it properly as four separate springs that are still identical, we would say, okay, so we are going to need four spring forces that uh, separate from each other. Uh, let me just, it, this is one, two, three, four and I can label them separately. But because they are identical springs, we can say the spring force of spring one is same as spring force of spring two, same as spring force of spring three, same as spring force of spring four. And because they are identical, we can also say that their displacement is the same. Uh, whatever delta y that's associated with each of them, it's the same. And it's the same delta y as before, because how much the truck is depressed, that's, uh, uh, that's the quantity that we are keeping constant as we reanalyze the situation. So, so okay, so, um, uh, so from this uh, picture of a free body diagram, uh, what we can still do is say, okay, so we have our the net upward force, the sum of the all the spring forces is equal to the net normal force, additional normal force from the mass downward. So that's still equal to mg. And as you look at this uh, left hand side here, uh, what you need to write out is okay. So this is going to be equal to um, the the actual spring constant k actual times the displacement delta y times four, four, four of them. They're identical, same actual spring constant. So, so yeah, that's our equation. And um, this uh, delta, what I wrote as a delta y here, it's going to be the exact same delta y as this delta y here, because we haven't changed anything physically. We are analyzing the same physical picture. We are just modeling it differently by acknowledging that the truck has a four suspension springs. So, so yeah, let me plug this in and solve for the K actual for the spring constant of individual springs. So when I do that, my K actual is equal to mg divided by 4 times delta y. mg divided by 4 delta y. I can plug in delta y. I get, um, so, well, let me write it out first and then I'll cancel out the things that cancel. 4 times mg divided by k. mg is cancel. Uh, 1 over 1 over k that simplifies as just uh, k and to be clear it's a k effective not k of individual spring divided by 4. So that's it and I guess if you want to work backward what the um, what the rule is for adding springs together uh, in parallel is you could say oh so when you have identical springs adding parallel, then they add in such a way that the effective spring constant uh, adds. Because uh, if you add each individual one of these four times, that's how you get a k-effective back. So you could have come up with that rule, but um, for a situation like this, it's not necessary. You can just, uh, this is really the point of the problem solving approach that we've been teaching the whole semester that it's a general approach. You don't need to memorize this and that rule uh, for each individual situations. You can just uh, up, approach each question with a general approach, just uh, paying attention to the physical picture as you visualize it. So, so let me work out the numbers for part A and for part B, I think I can just do that in my head. So I'll just do that in my head. So for part A, um, <laughs> since it's a single number, let me just plug in the numbers. So the mass is 810 kilogram um, times 9.8 meter per second squared divided by, I see that the, my spring constant is already in basic SI unit. So I can say uh, divide by 1.85, at times the 10 to the power of five. Now, this will give me delta y in meters. 
So I need to multiply it by a factor to convert from meter to centimeter. So times, um, I need to cancel out meters. So I want meters on the denominator, centimeter on the numerator. So the ratio, if I wrote it out, it'll be 100 centimeter divided by one meter. So, okay. So 4.29 centimeter. That should be the answer for the part A. 4.29. Uh, 4K, this should be the effective K divided by 4. I think I can do that in my head. Uh, 0 0.4. Let's see. 6 to 5, I think. Times 10 to the power of 5. I think that's right. If it's wrong, I'll do it on a calculator. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so. So that's it for the question. I think I used to ask a question like this back when we do uh, spring force and energy conservation, but uh, at some point I stopped asking it because uh, it, you know, it, it does take a bit of thinking through and um, people were struggling with it. So <laughs> this is the context where you can see it. And you, you know, in a different situation that deals with the springs being connected in series, the analysis is different and you will get a different rule for adding those um, if you go through the analysis. Um, but I'll, I'll do that either if there's a question from people or if there's another uh, homework question where it's relevant.